All right. Well, welcome everyone to tune in I mean, Together Tuesdays. Uh, my name is Kevin Vogel. I'll be your host today, like I am every, on every Tuesday. And of course, I'm going to have Melissa with me today. Hi, Melissa. Hey, Kevin. How are you? Good. And is Alexander in today, Melissa? Um, no, but he should be back with us tomorrow. Oh, OK, great, great. So today we're going to be covering just a, a couple of topics here. Melissa is going to be going over some of the most popular features of Inkscape Manage, uh, and she's going to do a quick demo on that. And then I'm going to be covering uh, something that a lot of customers have been asking about, which is migrating from Windows 10 to Windows 11, what it's going to take, what hardware we're going to need, and so on. So I'm going to go be going through uh, what Microsoft has published already, just to give you a heads up. And of course, you can always ask questions along the way. Please just put them in the chat here inside of Teams, and we'll try to answer your questions just as soon as possible. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Melissa. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, Melissa, and you can start sharing yours. Perfect. Thank you. So good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for your time on today's uh, session for Together Tuesdays. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you before we jumped into the Inkscape Manage tile um, was a really great feature that I want to make sure that everybody's leveraging within the Inkscape platform in general. That's within the Account Info tile. Um, so if I click into the Account Info tile and I go to the Microsoft tab, some of you have reached out looking for more details on your invoices that we can actually put on there because of proration. So I wanted to just make sure that those of you that are on the call today know where you can go within the account info in Financial Snapshot to be able to click on export to CSP and that will allow you to extrapolate right from Inkscape account info more of the details as far as your licensure is concerned, your cost, the subscription ID, the quantity. I know that was a very specific question um, that came up from one of our clients wanting to see that in the invoice itself. Um, so be that as that may, I just wanted to make sure that you're all familiar with the financial snapshot area and where you can come in here for your Microsoft spend and be able to export and see the more specific or granular uh, details for your invoices. So um, any questions on that, Kevin? And you could do that for Office 365, Azure, your Azure yep. reservations. In other words, if you have um, instances that, that uh, you reserve instance on, you can do all those things right up there. What about AWS? I, I see that up there now too. Oh, of course, of course. That's one of our newer integrations um, with the Inkscape platform. And of course, with that too, you can come in here and extrapolate your AWS um, spend in detail here with the export to CSV button as well. Oh, great. And what is the message ops tab? What is that? I think that is our internal tab. I'm in a demo uh, environment right now, so oh. I think that's for our internal use. But for our customers that are on the call, if they click on Microsoft, that will um, give them their Office 365 spend. If they're using Azure, again, they can grab the Azure details of their invoices right from here, as well as their reservation software and um, anything they may have procured in the marketplace as well. So. Um, ahead of the Inkscape Manage piece, I wanted to make sure that everybody was familiar with that, as well as here on the PDF invoice history is where you can come and retrieve your invoices should you need to go and uh, retrieve them and not want to go, you know, traipsing through your uh, email. So that was one thing yeah, I wanted. You can also change the date up there though, can't you on the first screen that you were on? Up, yes. up at the top, yep. you, you can yep. pick a yep. date range that you want. So if you want to see, you know, last June or something, you can just go up there and, and change the date and see whatever you need, right? Absolutely, yep. You can leverage okay. the date picker for any of that. Absolutely. Um, billing information too. Um, if you need to update your you know, information, the billing name and address, um, they can certainly come in here and do that. Um, this is not tied into a credit card processing system. So if they are paying by credit card today, that's something they would still need to call into our dedicated AR team for, but you can update your billing address and information. And here's where you can add additional folks within your organization to receive the emailed invoices from Sirius. Uh, very simply, if you click the little blue plus sign here, type in the field and this will predict from your AD, select that person, hit save, and then whomever they have listed here would then be uh, receiving the invoices that are mailed out or emailed out, I should say more accurately. Sounds pretty easy to me. 
pretty easy, yes. Um, this more uh, focus of today's call, with, though, however, is the Inkscape Manage tile, formerly known as Inkscape 365. We have some very popular features that I wanted to highlight in here, one of which is the ability to export um, PSTs from here. So if I click on Office 365, this will show their Active Directory user listings. You can type in and search. And then if you select the ellipsis here on the far right hand side, if I click export mailbox as a PST, select export PST, this will then kick off a PST. With Inkscape Manage, you can have it go to your default storage location, or if you select the configure storage location option here, um, this is currently integrated with Azure Blob Storage, so should they want their PSD to go to their Azure Blob Storage, they can certainly configure it um, to do that as well. So once you kick off the PSD, up at the top on the dashboard here is where you'll be able to track the progress, who or the status, who exported it, the completed date, the runtime, et cetera. And you could click on the history to see the history of their uh, PSTs that they've exported. Um, by no means is this an official quote unquote Office 365 backup, but this was definitely an ask from our uh, customers, uh, Kevin, and that we um, added this into Inkscape Manage for them. So you can actually have two at the same time, but you can queue up as many as you want, right? That is correct, yes. Okay, because you don't want to eat up bandwidth with downloading. You know, some of these PSTs can be huge, you know, depending upon the person. So you probably don't want to, you know, that's why we limit it to just two, and then you can kick it right off. Um, how did you get to the PST? Um, Rob's asking. Okay, so once you go into uh, Office 365 at the top, this will show all of your users and your Azure AD user listings. So, or you can filter. So if I want to search for somebody, so say I put in Chris's name as an example, this is my demo tenant. Um, once you're in there, click the little ellipses here on the right hand side, select export mailbox as a PST, and that will kick off the PST for you. Perfect. All right, Rob, thanks. Okay, good. I just you're very well. You're very welcome. Another cool feature of this for those that are in cloud only environments, we are currently working to make this um, by conditional for those that are in hybrid situations is under user management. This is where if you're having a lot of pain points with onboarding offboarding under user management, there is a whole provisioning wizard here that will literally walk you through step by step onboarding somebody to your organization that may have been hired and taken on. So you go literally step by step and then Conversely, if somebody was leaving their organization and you wanted to make sure that you tighten up security, you change their mailbox to a shared mailbox, et cetera, if you click the provision user, this will walk you through the steps of offboarding somebody from your organization to ensure that you're resetting their password, you're you know, updating their account settings, and, and doing all the necessary steps security-wise and otherwise for Office 365 to ensure that they're fully offboarded. So that's another feature that we know that a lot of people are leveraging uh, that are in the cloud um, only environment. Any any questions on on that one? Well, I, I do have a question going back to the PST export. You can pick instead of picking blob storage, you can pick your local machine and and actually um, export that to your local drive, can't you? As as one of the options. Correct. That is one of the options by default. It goes to your default storage location. Right. So in other words, if if uh, if you don't change it, it's going to ask you where you want it. You want it in a certain drive or a certain directory. That's what it's going to do, correct? Correct, correct. And I know that the team was or is working on more um, options for the customer to be able to determine where they want the location to be. But for right now, it's either their default storage location that they select or they can configure the location to go to Azure Blob Storage here if they have that configured. So Wilder asked for Office 365, is any automatic backup is, I think is there any automatic backup? And there isn't that comes with Office 365. There's a lot of third party products out mm -hmm. there that will back up your uh, Office 365 mailboxes. But remember now you have things like Teams and SharePoint and there's a lot of other data in Office 365 that you can back up now. Um, and really there's, you, you're actually gonna use a third party, uh, somebody like Veeam or Commvault. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them out there. We'll be more than happy to help you Wilder if you want uh, to, to help you demo or take a look at a few of the options that are available. 
Yeah, we have a whole dedicated team to that that would be more than happy to demonstrate any of the um, applicable, you know, backup solutions for you. You got it. Okay, go ahead, Melissa. Sorry, I'm just right. trying to answer Absol questions as they come Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Another um, component here that I want to make sure that you're all leveraging, and this is going towards cost management and making sure that we're doing our due diligence and helping our customers, you know, save money. Under the cost management tab in the dashboard, if you click on that, this is going to take you to your screen where you'll be able to clearly see any unassigned licenses that are sitting in your attention that you're not assigned that you're getting billed for monthly. So here you'll see the quantity, you'll see the cost, and from here you can export it as a, an Excel or a CSV. So I thought this was a rather cool feature to uh, alert our customers to um, in case they wanted to either assign those licenses or uh, decrease the total amount. So for instance, if you deprovision someone there, um, like you talked about earlier, those licenses would go back into a pool unless you went into a different area and subtracted those licenses so you wouldn't get paid, so you don't have to pay for them, correct? Correct. So that, uh, um, for instance, if they didn't need, you know, their additional exchange online plan one, they could either go ahead and assign that to somebody that needs it, or that could prompt them to go into the Microsoft licensing tile and decrease whatever the total is of that, thus saving the monthly spend on that particular license. Yes. So that would be a different tile here in Inkscape, correct? That is correct. So if I jump back to my other tab here, if they come into the Microsoft licensing tab, that's where they can make any necessary adjustments to their licenses, whether it's increasing, decreasing, or suspending licenses. Okay, great. Another cool thing here, you get they'll see their total license cost. So you'll see your total quantity, the total cost, and what the, the total number here is for the cost for that. Um, here again, you can export this as an Excel or a CSV. For those, you know, looking on the financial side of the house, you could see again, you know, what's consumed versus what's not consumed and determine, you know, what you need to scale back, what you need to assign. Also, another thing that's really important that a lot of people really like to see as far as Enscape Manage is the uh, inactive users. So these are people that haven't logged in to their tenant in 30, 60, or 90 days. So this may prompt them to go ahead and remove the licensing from somebody that hasn't logged in since, you know, January 15th, January 7th, et cetera. So that's always a good thing to keep top of mind and take a look at while you're in Enscape Manage to save um, some dollars and cents that way, as well as your blocked users. Um, this could be people that were let go of the organization or left. And so if we had anybody here for Sirius, it would have their display name and what their license is associated with them. And so if we take a look at that and we realize that the person is no longer with the organization, again, we could take the necessary actions to remove the licensing and, and thus you know, save the monthly spend on, on that individual or individuals. Also here are your assigned license cost by filter. So for those on the financial side of the house that are very interested in seeing the granular spend, you can filter by things like city, state, country or even department and then I could you know filter by department so if I pick the executive department as an example this will give you a granular insight into what department is doing what with their licenses so here you could see they have you know Microsoft Business Basic what the total quantity is why there's only you could figure out why there's only one assigned and there's a total of five and what the total cost is and all of this you can definitely export as an excel a csv or even clear or click on the detailed log and be able to see the information literally here right on screen and grab a report with the click of a button. So those were just a couple of things I wanted to show. Another cool item within here is bulk operations. Um, so in case anybody within the organization is looking to do certain actions in bulk, there is the ability within Enscape Manage to be able to do so. Um, so here you can see in my demo environment, we have certain actions in place already, like in place archive with auto expanding archive. If you need to create a new bulk operation, it's as simple as click new bulk operation. And these are currently the actions that are in place. So depending upon what you do, you would select, you know, litigation hold. And then here you would just click, you know, the duration that you want for the litigation hold, you know, 12 days, 100 days, whatever it may be. And then you would, you know, follow the on step prompts to go ahead and activate in you know the um, litigation hold for all users you could search for particular users or you can search for a particular attribute and then you would be able to do those particular actions in bulk without having to do it for you know one person at a time so i thought that was pretty cool 
comments, questions, or concerns on the uh, bulk activation tool? None that are in the chat thing, so so far so good. OK, and one last thing I wanted to make sure you were all aware of too is reporting. Um, so those that are on the call that are on the admin side of the house, that a lot of your day is spent trying to put together, you know, reports and such. There is a whole bunch of reports, 100 plus and growing within uh, the Inscape Manage platform. So if you click on report listing, that will expose all of the reports that are currently in here. So you can scroll down and look at all the, you know, the reports and select the one you want to drill into. Or you can leverage the categories filter here. So perhaps I'm looking to see, you know, licensing or reports just on licensing. I can select that. That will filter all of the licensing reports. From there, I can click on license summary, for example, and this will expose for your organization what licenses are consumed, what's unused. So here I can also see on the chart down here what we have active, what's consumed, and how many units are left. And then from the top up here, you have the following actions you can take. You can download it as a CSV, Excel, PDF. You could print it out. You could save the instance, or one of the great features of Inkscape Manage is the scheduling tool. This will allow you to put together either you know, a schedule for one report or multiple reports to go at any given date or time without you having to come back into Inkscape Manage and do anything. So you could literally build a schedule, set it and forget it, and then whomever you have it going to will receive those reports at the given date and time that you select as the uh, receiving and send date. Pretty and cool. You can pick the format that they get it in, right? As part of that schedule, you could say, send it as an Excel or send it as a PDF. Correct, correct, yes. So those were just a few of the um, high level or um, popular items here with Inkscape Manage. Of course, if anybody wants to take a deeper dive on, on any of this, please, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to me. But those are the things that I, you know, constantly get questions on that I wanted to highlight on today's call. All right, well, thank you, Melissa, very much. That was very educational, at least it was for me. I don't work in this every single day, so this uh, this really worked out very well for me. So thanks a lot, and uh, we'll continue on with, you know, our talking about Windows 11. And for those of you that haven't played with Windows 11, obviously it went GA October 5th, so this is not a beta or any type of pre type of, of uh, operating system. This is fully supported. Uh, in fact, now even in uh, Windows 365, which is the cloud PC that Microsoft is offering, you can now pick either Windows 10 or Windows 11 to be up in your cloud PC. So just to give you quick information on, and by the way, we're gonna be sending out this uh, presentation. It's got a whole bunch of links in here because um, there's a lot of information and, and I couldn't put everything in uh, the presentation, but these are like the minimum. You got to have a one gigahertz processor. Obviously, that's not a big deal with two or more cores. I mean, that's kind of minimum on everything nowadays. There is a list of the CPUs if you want. I put it in here with a link to it of, of what processors four gigs of memory, so basic memory on, on the machine, 64 gigs of storage. You do have to be UEFI, you can't be BIOS. So um, with, especially now with Windows 11 and a lot of the security that's built into Windows 11, UEFI is, is mandatory now. So you can do secure boot and things like that. All of this is part of the minimum system requirements. TPM is probably the biggest thing that a lot of people are a little worried about, and it has to be version 2.0. So uh, anything that's probably two years or older, you might have a problem with, because that's really when uh, 2.0 became kind of the norm that you would find on your hardware. So you can actually go in and, and take a look at that in your BIOS graphics card. Uh, it's got to be DirectX 12 or later, um, high definition, you know, 720p. I think that's like minimum for everyone. And if you're looking to do an upgrade from a Windows 10 version, it's got to be at least the um, 2004 or later version to upgrade um, to Windows 11 in place. One of the things that you can actually do is go in and get a uh, PC health check which is right here at aka.ms uh, at get PC Health Check app. 
It's a Microsoft free application that you can run. Make sure that your uh, PC is uh, Windows 11 compliant and you can use it for Windows 11. You can also download, and I put the link up here, where you can download the full version of Windows 11 right from Microsoft. Uh, you can create the media. Obviously, you can put it on a CD-ROM if you want. You can put it in you know, a, 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 just a file that you can actually go across the uh, network to get, or you can put it on a USB drive. However you want to do it, it's up to you. Very easy to do it. Um, and I also included some of the links here so that you guys could go in and just download the installation assistant. You can create the media with this. You can also go in here and get an ISO if you want to cut it, obviously, to a DVD. Um, very easy to do that. Now, if you're using volume licensing, um, and this is where you can download the enterprise editions of, uh, of Windows 11. You need to go to your, uh, to your volume licensing service center um, and go in and get whatever you need right from there. You can also visit the Insider site uh, and get the downloads, uh, some of the preview builds from there also. So I put all the links in here for you so that you'll be able to get the media that you need to be able to get Windows 11. So with that, let's talk about the different methods you can use to actually install Windows 11 on your devices that are out there. For those of you that have uh, adopted the Microsoft 365 platform and are now using things like Autopilot. Autopilot is part of the Intune suite of products that's now called Endpoint Manager. And Endpoint Manager is basically System Center uh, and Intune combined into one product. So you can use both of those to actually go in and upgrade or wipe out and uh, do a fresh install of Windows 11 on the devices that are compliant. Now, remember, they do have to meet those minimum requirements. Excuse me. OK, uh, you can also, if you use currently use group policies to manage your Windows 10 devices, you can also use group policy to manage Windows 11 devices inside Endpoint Manager. There are administrative templates and settings catalogs that include many of the same policies for Windows 11 that you had for Windows 10. So you can see Windows 11 is just the newest version. They've adopted a lot of the same things, but they've also updated and optimized uh, the bandwidth consumption that it takes to do all of these things. So they've really thought about this, Microsoft. Uh, they want to get you to Windows 11, and you know it's it's something that you know they want to try to make as easy as possible. Just like Windows 10, though, you will receive monthly uh, quality updates if you want. You can also go for the twice a year update, just like you did with Windows 10. So don't think that uh, any of those type of things have changed. They really haven't. When you're talking about um, planning your deployments here, um, since it's built on the same foundation as Windows 10, you can use the same deployment capabilities, scenarios, and tools, as well as the same basic deployment strategy that you used when you moved from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Um, just make sure that you create a plan that you obviously make sure that all of your devices are, are compliant and readiness criteria, um, which I gave you earlier in here. Infrastructure uh, tools, um, you got to make sure that your bandwidth is there. So um, you can do that. I put a link right down here at the bottom of the screen so that you can actually pull down from Microsoft's um, uh, document library, uh, the plan for Windows 11, it's right here. And I took all of this out of their documentation. So it's uh, we just didn't make it up to, to go for it. Um, as a first step, you'll need to know uh, you know, what current devices meet your Windows 11 uh, hardware uh, so that you can do this. Microsoft is currently developing uh, an uh, analytic tools to help you evaluate, and I showed you one of the links that you can use on that. Obviously, we're not going to do home. You might do pro. You're probably going to do enterprise 
in most cases. Um, and there is a, a PC health check app that I showed you earlier that you can run against this just to make sure that you're doing this. Enterprise organizations, you can evaluate and your, your devices by using, if you're already using Endpoint Manager, there's already some tools built in there for Windows 11. So um, Microsoft has really got this thing ready to go. So if you're looking for um, the readiness considerations that you want to take advantage of, obviously bandwidth is one of the things you got to worry about. So infrastructure, the, uh, the deployment process that we talked about, and the management tools to get ready for that. And you can also, and I'll tell you, if you're not part of the Windows Insider Program for business, absolutely join that. It, it really does give you a lot of new tools and new advice. I use it all the time to help us. Uh, as you plan your endpoint management strategy, consider moving to a mobile device manager like Intune. It makes it so much easier for your organization especially now with people working from home or remote offices now that aren't coming in. It really, cloud-based tools really help you uh, manage all of your devices no matter where they are. So you should absolutely take advantage of those things. Servicing and support, again, you can do the same thing that you're doing with Windows 10. So if you're using like enterprise or education editions, uh, you will be supported for 36 months from the general availability date, like I told you, October 5th. Um, you can consolidate your Windows update history, make it available on support.com, uh, support.microsoft.com. And again, just like Windows 10, you can build in these twice a year updates, monthly updates, however you want to do it you can do it just like you did for Windows 10. So there's, you really don't have to change what you're doing. You just are doing it now with a new operating system. So in here, um, uh, like I said, compatibility, there's a bunch of tools that Microsoft has that's available to you. And uh, you know, a lot of people are worried. I remember when we went from Windows 7 to Windows 10, making sure the applications would run. So application compatibility was a big deal. Microsoft says that over 99.7% of all the applications that run on Windows 10 will run on Windows 11. But it's still, I mean, I would make sure that I would test these applications running on Windows 11 before I took the big jump. And you can do that with the App Assure and test based for Office 365. If you want to run compatibility issues, there's a way to do it. Microsoft gives it to you. App Assure, uh, with the enrollment of the App Assure service, any, uh, any app compatibility issues that you find with Windows 11 can be resolved. Microsoft will help you remediate application is issues at no cost. So since 2018, over 800,000 apps and subscriptions have been uh, helped to make sure that they run in Windows 10. And then test base for Microsoft 365, for any software publishers that are building applications, for instance, that run in, for instance, Teams, or any of the other applications inside Office 365, you can actually get into the test base for Windows, I mean, for Microsoft 365. So really, those are the things that you need to do to help you get there uh, to the, uh, let me just see if there's any questions. Nope, okay. Um, but we're gonna have two more for this month because obviously Thanksgiving is coming up and you know we, we're not gonna be doing anything the week of Thanksgiving or really the week after Thanksgiving. A lot of people take vacations. So we're gonna be kicking off. Um, we have two more this month and then we'll have a schedule in December, which will be a little bit shorter also because of the holidays. So next week, we're going to be covering how to use forms and polling inside of Teams. This has become a very popular option now to actually ask questions during Teams meetings, get feedback, get information from the audience. And then we're going to review Teams report inside of Inkscape Manage, and I'm sure Melissa is going to go and do a great job on getting those reports you might need from Teams. And then 
on the middle of the month on November 16th, we'll review the Enscape licensing, how to procure them. We showed you where that tile was today. Even when it comes to third party licensing and software licensing, how you can use Enscape to do that. And then we'll go real in depth on the MSKU or the Microsoft 365 licensing and let you know what's included with the different E3s and E5s when it comes to Microsoft 365. So with that, um, if there's any questions, let me just double check, see if there's anything we need to answer here. I know we're coming up here on time, um, but thanks for joining us again uh, here and I, we're right on 2.30, so we got this done right on time. So thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, have a great week and we will see you next Tuesday. Thanks, Thank Melissa. Thank you. Thank you everybody, bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.